Enders are just as good as Bamboo Labs printers. Bamboo is overrated, and everything that you can do with a bamboo, you can do with an ender. These are some of the most common things that I hear about when people are talking about ender versus bamboo. And the truth is, there are pros and cons to each machine, and I want to get into some of those with you here today. I first started 3D printing on a regular Ender 3. I still have it, and to be honest, it's just taking up room in a closet right now. I constantly had to tinker with it and uh, repair parts and replace them and all kinds of stuff. And if you've ever had an original Ender, I'm sure that you feel my pain. Since then, I've gone through almost a dozen other machines, all with their pros and cons. That is, until I got a Bamboo Labs printer, and I got a Bamboo P1S. Compared to all my other machines, the Bamboo was an absolute cakewalk. It still had its issues, but it was fun. And yeah, the slicing software was a bit of a learning curve, but compared to some of the other slicers that I've used, it was relatively intuitive. The prints that I was putting out were just light years ahead of anything else that I could print on any of my other machines. And it was fast. But I needed another machine to be running because I have some events coming up soon. I need to be prepped with a lot of supplies. So I went to Amazon and uh, checked what they had in stock, and I do usually try to keep up on what's going on in the 3D print world, and you know, what's coming out, what's currently out, all that stuff. I had mostly been focusing on my bamboo and adding the AMS to it. Let me know if you want me to do a video about that whole process down in the comments below. But I started looking at the new line of Ender 3s, and I decided that I wanted to try out the Ender 3 V3 KE. Uh, it has auto leveling, filament runout sensors, and wireless printing, touchscreen controls, and it runs Clipper. So I ordered it from Amazon, and I had it the next day. I did have to wait a few days to get it set up, though. Uh, once I was able to get around to setting it up, I found that it was a lot simpler than the original Ender. You basically just attach the gantry with a couple screws and then screw on the uh, touch screen and start attaching wires. And that was pretty much it. You're good to go. Um, the longest part of the install was actually setting up the slicer software and getting it connected to my computer via Wi-Fi. Um, but I was very excited that you can now control the Ender with Wi-Fi. Uh, so it was time to run my test print. And I was very pleased with how beginner-friendly the new Creality Print interface was. Uh, you just add the file, you select if you want high quality or normal quality, and select your machine and hit print. And you're good to go. For a beginner, I think that's absolutely great. Um, or even just somebody who's new to the software. I'd never used it before, and uh, once I got it set up, I was running in just a couple minutes. The software said about an hour and a half for the print completion, and let's just say that I was pleasantly surprised and a little bit disappointed with how it turned out. Uh, so I ran a platypus on normal mode, and this was an articulating platypus. Um, I didn't adjust any settings, which was kind of my downfall. Um, at first, I was super happy with it. Um, looked great for the 0.2 millimeter print settings. And it said an hour and a half print time, and it came out in an hour and a half. Compared to a regular Ender 3, this thing was lightning fast. But then I realized that with the default settings, it printed with a brim. My fault for not checking that, but I haven't gotten used to the slicer software yet, and 
I just wasn't really expecting that. Um, so I sat down and tried to separate it from the brim and the parts that normally articulate just weren't articulating. And after about 20 minutes or so, I just gave up on it. Um, I figured it's really not a big deal. Um, it was just the settings and, uh, I blamed it that, you know, I shrunk it down to a smaller scale than what I normally would print it with. Um, but I did have one that I printed on a bamboo just for comparison. And, uh, so I've got those two right here to show. So then I decided to start printing the same or similar things with the ender and the bamboo. Uh, I wanted to do kind of a side by side comparison. There were things that I noticed with each machine certain things each machine handled better than the other one. And there were things that bothered me with the Ender that kind of make it a deal breaker for me, but that also make it kind of great for just somebody who is a beginner just getting into 3D printing. So let me kind of go through the prints with you here and just show you what I'm talking about. I started off not intending to print similar things. I started off with this Egyptian um, kind of vase looking thing. Uh, and then I also printed a dragon vase on the Ender. The Egyptian vase on the bamboo came out about six hours faster than the dragon vase on the ender and uh, as you can see with the dragon vase on the ender I ended up having to do a filament change halfway through which I wasn't planning on doing but I did notice that the filament would kind of twist as it was printing and you would see the different layer lines um, because it was a tri-filament so you're seeing the colors shifting as it's going along. And it gives it a very inconsistent look. And with the bamboo, you don't really see that. The, the filament doesn't twist around as it's printing. So if you're doing a tricolor, it gives you a perfect all-around tricolor effect. So you really notice it as you're rotating the print. That's exactly what I was going for with this print. So I'm a little disappointed that the dragon turned out the way that it did, but I figured that's not that big of a deal. I went ahead and did the same exact print on both of them. I went to uh, just a regular vase design and loaded the same thing into each printer. Again, the Bamboo Labs came out so much faster than the Ender did. Um, but I did notice some issues with each of the prints. Now, this is a print that I got off of STL Flix, and it said that I didn't need supports to print this. And uh, that's kind of what I thought that I did, but it turned out on the Ender, even though I had selected to remove the supports, it still printed with them for some reason. Um, now, when I say it printed with the supports... It did mess up on the supports, but still successfully printed with them. Um, I'll show you what that looks like right here. Um, which that was fine, but halfway through, there was a weird layer shift. There wasn't any issues with the build plate adhesion. The entire print just shifted a little bit. So I, I still don't know just what happened with that, but you can definitely notice it going throughout the print here. For the stand, I noticed that the legs were wobbly. They didn't really print in the correct dimension, so it, it just made it turn out weird, and it makes it off balance. Um, with the bamboo print, there were no supports, and as you can see, there probably should have been. I have no doubt that part of the issue was that I ran it in ludicrous mode. 
Uh, but that's pretty normal for me to do. I don't usually run into issues with my prints when I'm doing that. Uh, but apart from the areas that probably would have printed fine if I was just running on normal, everything else came out fine. And uh, the legs fit together normally. Everything was dimensionally accurate. The next test was fuzzy skin mode. And these turned out great. Both turned out pretty much the same. Um, putting them side to side, I would guess that you really couldn't tell which one is which. Um, of course, the Bamboo Labs did print faster, but looking at them, that doesn't really make a difference. The only real difference that you're going to find is at the bottom of the print. The one on the Bamboo came out absolutely perfect, and the Ender came out just a little bit wonky, but it doesn't affect the dimensions or anything like that. And Again, with the Creality, you can really see the filament shift. But with this particular vase, that's perfectly fine. I'm not bothered by that really at all. And obviously with the bamboo print, I went through and purposely did several color changes uh, so that you would get these cool layers on. All in all, I would say they turn out flawless. Now, this last one here is one that I just ran on the Ender 3, and as you can see, it came out flawlessly. There was no filament shift or anything like that. Um, now, I'm still messing with the slicer settings on the Creality print. Um, I just discovered the trick to moving the build plate on screen is by holding down the scroll wheel on the mouse and then moving it around, which I thought was super weird. Um, but I, I feel like there's plenty of tips and tricks that I still need to figure out on uh, that slicing software to make the prints better. I will say it looks like Creality is heading in the right direction. I've heard that they're following in bamboo steps and coming out with a... Uh, with a multicolor attachment for the K series as well as the new V3 series. Um, let me know if you're interested in that. I, I'm very curious to see how that's going to turn out, how that's going to interface. Uh, but that's, that's one thing that Bamboo already has over Creality is they've already got a multicolor print system. I just have the four piece, but you can get all the way up to 16 different colors. And even the A1 Mini, which is running for 250 bucks right now, um, you can add the AMS light to it uh, for a total of 399 out the door, which that's just absolutely insane if you think about it. Downside to that is I believe the print bed on... Uh, a1 Mini is 180, whereas the Ender 3, you're looking at 220, and for uh, Bamboo Labs is 256. So the Bamboo Labs is going to get you a larger build plate, so you can either put more stuff on it or print larger stuff on it. There are some things that I would still like to see improved upon. Uh, the filament sensor... The filament runout sensor, for one, I feel like needs to be closer to the extruder. And uh, they don't really have a good filament load and unload process uh, that you see on most of the interfaces. You still have to manually push down on the lever to put the filament in and take it out instead of pushing something on the touch screen. I can just see that causing issues later on down the road. That being said, for a beginner with a $300 budget, the V3KE is a very viable option. And there's even a more budget-friendly one, I believe the V3SE, that's something like $220. Um, and you can get either one of those on Amazon or directly from the Creality website, which I'm going to put a link down to those, uh, which I'm going to put an affiliate link for both of those down below. You can get it on Amazon or Creality, whichever you have a preference for. Um, I prefer Amazon because you can usually get it either the next day or within two to three days. That being said, if you have a less restrictive budget, 
and you want to be able to print larger products or multiple colors, Bamboo is the way to go. I absolutely love this thing. I would recommend at least the P1S. Um, it's fully enclosed and uh, it's got the camera that can do time lapses and all that good stuff with it. Bear in mind though, just this printer is about three times the cost of the Ender 3 V3 KE. So if you're just using it strictly as a hobby or doing stuff around the house, I'd say you really can't go wrong with either machine, whether you're looking at the budget friendly or, um, you know, looking for more of a commercial grade. I'd say definitely check out the Ender 3 V3 KE. Uh, I know there, that they have a camera available for it, uh, which you can use for time lapsing or just monitoring it. And they even have an app that you can use on your cell phone that controls the machine. So if it's remote and you're watching it and seeing something mess up, you can just open up the app and just cancel the print from there or pause the print or anything like that. And that's the same for the Bamboo or for the Ender. Um, both have remote apps that you can that you can pause, you can uh, get notifications when the print is finished or if there's any kind of issues with the print. So um, guys, if there's anything that I missed out on or if you have any questions that I haven't covered about either machine, leave me a comment down below. Um, I'm going to put some more information about the bamboo over here and uh, let's put up a video about my original Enders over here. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, don't forget to get your stuff from Amazon down below. I will also be putting a list of all of the filaments in the description and, and in the comments. So thanks for stopping by, guys. Bye. Thanks for guys. Uh.